Hi, I'm Seamless, and today is Friday, which is time for a new How to Bass tutorial, and today I'm going to show you how to make this sound. This video is brought to you by Eek. He is a Patreon patron. Uh, as it turns out, if you go to my Patreon campaign, you can uh, pledge a certain amount, and then you'll get promoted on a video, because you're a sponsor at that point. Or, uh, you get and you get a producer credit, which is where I, I use YouTube's credit system and I put your YouTube channel, as it turns out, that's the other way it works. Um, and that's what's up. So uh, not only am I promoting his YouTube channel, I'm also putting him his YouTube channel in as a credit because uh, that's he did that. He did that and he sponsored the video. It's pretty good stuff. If you want to do that kind of thing, go do my description of this video and check out the Patreon page where all of this is explained. So yes, this sound. <laughs> Uh, this one's fun. It's it does pretty regular stuff. It's got ye old high pass and ye old vocodex and that kind of thing, and some FM and that whatever. But this is there's a lot of layering going on here, and there's a lot of octave layering. In fact, the main sound itself is an octave higher than bass range. I just have this sub beneath it that is for real bass range. Um, so you can tell like if I actually bring this down to correct bass range, it actually sounds still kind of right as opposed to when you usually bring it down too far <laughs> we jeez but um i do, while i was just working on this i i don't know why but i just put was up on too high octave and i just made the whole chain while it was an octave higher i didn't really even realize that it was an octave higher because it didn't sound that way and there's reasons for that, but the result is that i have a sub bass that's the correct frequency and then i have everything else that's basically just one octave higher because you see, here's a correct bass range, and then, you know, FM and whatever, and then here's a sub that's one half the uh, fundamental. It's an actual sub harmonic. Anyway, um, the FM and all that is also pretty special. The What happens here is that there's this lower, this lower layer, and then there's this higher layer. And together with the sub, so i mean the first layer is pretty straightforward it's a uh fundamental sine wave well octave higher but fundamental sine wave modulated by a squared level sine wave which is say one octave higher double the ratio this uh, creates this kind of low mid presence it's very very kind of like you know tech housey almost and the point of this is that i wanted to make i wanted to make a lower layer and then make a higher layer and put them together but make it be independent of each other so that there's like more uh, sort of unique tone control and that's mostly what this guy is. Now, without the FM, this is what this sounds like. And the reason why that's important is because if we go to the unison index mapping pad, uh, tab on the pitch, we can see that there's actually different pitches. That's because this oscillator, when I have the four voices unison that I have, um, two of them on the left and the right, so they're symmetrical, is, uh, although I'm not panning, I don't think, is uh, they're an octave higher. So that means that this, this operator is actually essentially operating as four operators. Uh, two, two of which are um, the same pitch and two of the which are an octave higher. So it really is just two operators. And they're both being FM by the same uh, other operator. So this creates a, a slightly more interesting profile uh, than if it were, were just one regular higher harmonic. And then this is just uh, the same, you know, uh, octave higher sine wave thing, but it's a little bit more beefy because you hear the sine wave is uh, a bit more tensioned up, essentially just a saturated sine wave. And, and then layer, layer together to do that, but they're an octave higher, so then I have a sub that's coming down here to be the actual subharmonic. And good stuff. I'm uh, automating the X control through the envelope controller, which in here is just a linear one-to-one, -one, so there's just one movement is that movement, so it's not that, not that deep for that. The first thing that happens to it is that it gets put through this uh, high-pass filter. So this is an example, an example of why the envelope controller and similar controllers in, like, inside uh, Harmer and um, Citrus are, like, for me, preferable to straight-up macro control that you get in something like Serum or Massive. And it's because in regular macro world, you can set a range, like a, uh, an ending and a beginning range, and then they'll move through it, but it's always going to be linear. And here you can make it not linear. And one of the one of the applications of making it not linear is that here, I am it's leaning towards operating faster in the lower frequencies and then uh, slower in the higher frequencies. And the value of this is that it doesn't spend as much time 
illuminating the lower frequencies and it whips through them really fast which creates a, a, a bit more faster really not, not that much faster it creates um uh, a more sort of pleasing profile when it comes when it cuts through the the, the lowest of frequencies and then uh moves through the mid the lower mids and it doesn't really go that much higher because you don't really want to when it's, when it's this particular kind of low pass high pass rather it goes into the um wave shaper oh by the way if you're wondering why it looks like they're, they're the frequencies are changing or if you yourself have you ever moved a filter and you thought to yourself hey it's changing the frequency it's because it is um a filter an eq most basic kinds are going to be a type that's referred to as linear phase filters or minimum minimum phase the exact opposite of linear phase minimum phase and minimum phase profile alters the phase of frequencies around the cutoff to create whatever change is happening. It creates phase cancellation. And it's so the, the, to do that, it has to change the phase of the frequencies while it's playing right in real time. And if you do that, and then you change the position of a filter so you, that you're changing the phase of something while you're playing it, you change its pitch. This is how FM works. So that you're modulating the frequency. So if it feels like it's detuning or moving your frequencies, because it is. Uh, next step is that it goes through this distortion so this guy um is just some shape you know i wasn't really paying attention with it but i'm automating the pregame now the pregame is is how a lot it goes into the distortion so if it's really low it's less distortion when it's really high it's more distortion so we're, we're changing essentially the distortion profile in real time with the automation so that we're uh like when you're doing this kind of macro control when you're controlling you know a bunch of parameters all together in the same motion like you want to create a, tra a smooth transition, but also a difference between the beginning, uh, the zero position, and the max position. And it doesn't necessarily need to be zero in terms of everything is zero or everything is max, just different somewhere to somewhere else. And in this case, the, distort the distortion profile being more distorted at the top end of, of the automation versus the bottom end of the automation is cool. You can do the opposite if you want, but that's, you know, that's something to think about. And then it goes to the Vocodex. So you notice that like this isn't a big, terribly a big departure from what was happening with this regular distortion. A lot about what this tone is is being determined by the high pass filtering and the distortion, and then you know the FM shenanigans. Um, this particular uh, Vocodex is a bit simpler than usual. I had, I am changing the, the modular pitch shift uh, per band, and so am I the bandwidth. But the the settings themselves are very simple, and I'm not doing a lot. Like a lot of this is still default. The order is the same. The 47 bands are the same default setting. I didn't, um, I messed with the band distribution a little bit, but not like a lot, like I usually do. But the, uh, sort of the important parts here are what's going on in the bandwidth with this shape. So these windows, if you're not familiar with that, what these do is that they change these parameters. This guy, uh, most, most of these parameters have their own version of it, but it changes this parameter, uh, per band. So like these bands themselves have wider, uh, bands and these bands have thinner bands as opposed to changing all of them all at once. And this creates a, a slightly more interesting profile. So in this case, it actually contributes to the formatty nature of, of it. So these two particular parameters in concert create the biggest change in a tone you're going to get. And then, of course, the rest of them are there to make everything just a little bit better. In this case, uh, the release time and attack time are, are way down, but the whole time is really high. The whole time you can kind of consider it as being sustained, but it's a little bit more like release. And the reason why it's a little bit more like release, even though there was already a release, is because the Vocodex pro, like, envelopes are not triggered by um, MIDI. They're triggered by audio. They're triggered by the uh, frequency position, uh, frequency information of that position in the, in the spectrum, uh, whether that's on or off, that kind of thing. So that means that when it gets pushed up and it holds there, it is literally a sustain, but given the way that's triggered and, and that like your information can actually leave before it's over it's a little bit more like release higher hold times mean that the uh bands are going to hang around longer than they would have otherwise release time means that too but the release time means that they also kind of like you know taper hold does not hold stays and if i really like rang it up you can see what i mean by that so it's a fun parameter to mess around with. And I want to point out that these guys also have their own per band windows. I just didn't use them here. Uh, that's it for this guy. And then uh, it gets uh, EQ to get rid of the sort of lower frequencies. And then in concert with the sub, which is really just cut off from the original Citrus before the high pass, I want to point out. So that means that like we get the process value of having these frequencies whipped around by the high pass and the distortion of Vocodex. But then in the end of the sound, we have the actual like unmolested sub coming out of here. 
And together, they're combined in the Maximus, which is really just a lot of multi-band limiting, uh, some self saturation on the Master, and then just it's not that deep, honestly. The big thing that here is that like I, the higher frequencies are being crushed up, and they're really, really high. I put the band pretty far up here, and that's because the Mocha Decks took away a lot of them, but they were still there, but they were just very quiet. So we wanted to bring them back up to have the high frequency uh, balance. That's pretty neat. Now, I want to mention the Unison. Uh, the, here is Unison here, and the, the Unison decisions that I made were not made while I was making the Citrus. What was happening here is that this is what the sound sounded like for the longest point when I was making this. Actually, sounds a bit different, but that's also because I made some changes to FM while I was messing around with it. But uh, which I want to point out, like a lot of a lot of the sound design is not. I, I'm showing it step by step as far as like here's what the citrus is and here's what the distortion does, but. A lot of the decisions I'm making, I make when it's all there, or like in different parts of it are engaged, that kind of thing. Because you are uh, sometimes you do this long enough, eventually you'll know the results of like, okay, if I distort this thing while I'm making it, then it'll sound like that. But most of the time, you're not going to know that until you do it. And then you want to like change things while you have effects on it so you can see what the results are going to be. And so that's what I do most of the time. Um, the value of the unison, though, is not just because I'm using the, um, I'm, I have the unison index mapping creating multiple oscillators where there was once one but um it, the low pitch value and the low phase value keep it sharp if i bump up the phase it gets a little bit smoother which is kind of cool so you can actually control how sort of how sharp you want it to be and if i put it bring it all the way down we get that kind of noisier result where the phase cancellation is happening a lot slower because of the pitch you know doing it itself here doing it yeah so messing around with the pitch and the phaser are neat the, the padding of course also helps if you want it be bigger i gotta sneeze don't sneeze okay and other than that that's really the value of that. Of course, also creating the four voices. If you want to do the, the whole unison index mapping thing, but without having unison, just turn off all the all the parameters up here and keep the volume up. And then that's really all there is to that. And that's this entire thing. Yeah. Uh, so if you have any questions about this, please let me know. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And also to check out Eek's page, linked in the description of this video, because he was a, a patron who so, uh, pledged to donate the appropriate amount of money to become a producer, essentially, on one of the videos. Um, did I already say don't forget to like, comment, subscribe? If I didn't, do that. And as usual, have a nice day. Also, you can download this patch in the description of this video.